there are stories about what happened. It's true. Welcome to the Star Wars Canon Library. You heard the man, there were stories, and they're all true. My name is Brian. I'm the librarian here at the Canon Library, where we're keeping all the canon and chronological order for you guys. And I've got a very special guest with me for today's episode. I was going to do a mailbag, but we had a little bit of a change in plans. I got a hold of somebody, and they were willing to do an interview tonight, but I will get to that in just a second. I've also got with me Mr. Chris Stolle. How are you tonight, Chris? What, I'm not the special guest? Well, I mean, you can be. Oh, okay. I'm the special guest. No, no, we got somebody really cool. So I'm we, doing great. Let you get to it. We really do. And uh, tonight we have on a Skype call. We don't have any video, but we do have audio. We have Mr. John Jackson Miller with us, the author of A New Dawn, Lost Tribes of the Sith, which is now in the expanded universe. But we do have Mr. Miller with us tonight. How are you, Mr. Miller? I'm doing all right. How are you? Doing great. Hey, thank you so much for doing this interview with us. I really do appreciate it very, very much, uh, especially very short notice like that. Um, we've got several questions we'd like to ask you, uh, a couple of which came from our viewers. Uh, and, uh, if you're okay with it, let's just jump right into this Sounds and, good. and, uh, we're only going to keep you, like I said, for 20 or 30 minutes. So, uh, here we go. The first question I've got, uh, is simply this, uh, what was your initial reaction, uh, when you heard that Disney and Lucasfilm were doing away with the old expanded universe material and they were starting a new canon, a new legend, uh, a new canon, and, not, and no longer the the legends material. Well, you know, I, I had sort of an interesting seat for this, <laughs> maybe a, certainly a unique seat for this, because again, I was writing uh, a Rebels novel uh, in 2013, I guess it was, uh, and actually we were already into 2014 when when uh, I got the word. Uh, I was about uh, two thirds of the way through the book. Uh, when, uh, you know, I, I got uh, the call saying, uh, or got informed, hey, we, we need you to come out to Lucasfilm because uh, we're going to have you uh, do a, a video along with uh, Timothy Zahn. Uh, and, uh, you know, basically it's sort of a, a you know, an explanation of what had changed. Uh, because, again, what we were doing was, what they wanted to do was to reflect how the procedure, the process of A New Dawn was different from anything that had come before. Um, in the past, what would happen is I would work with the, uh, you know, the, the publishers who were the licensees of Lucasfilm, uh, just as in any other situation, where, whether it's Star Trek or Planet of the Apes or something else that I've worked with. And then what will happen is uh, you know, they will... Uh, send the material to Lucasfilm, where the fiction editor uh, Jennifer Heddle would, uh, you know, approve or disapprove or you know, offer suggestions on things, uh, and then everything would also run by Leland Chi, who was the keeper of the holocron. Mm -hmm. um, what was different here was simply that, well, it was already different because I was going to be working with the Rebels TV series people, mm -hmm. so you know I was already being brought into conversations with the three executive producers of the TV show. And so I was getting, you know, I had the story Bible for the series. I had, uh, you know, conversations with, uh, with them ahead of time, or at least, uh, you know, certainly they were able to, you know, write notes on my, uh, you know, proposals and everything. And they suggested to me things that would be, you know, directions where it would be good for the, po you know, possible novel to go. Uh, and I, you know, chose from all of the different options that I had the kind of book that we ended up writing, which was uh, Kanan and Hera's uh, first meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, in there, I I had a conference call with the uh, you know the the folks with the, the Lucasfilm Story Group, uh, which uh, you know which uh, Dave Filoni was sitting in on, uh, and the whole idea was that uh, in it instead of being what we had in the past. Uh, where it was much more of a reactive kind of thing where stuff would happen in the Clone Wars or stuff would happen in the movies or something like that. And then those of us in the novels would, and the comics and everything, would work to, you know, sort of reflect what was there and mm -hmm. uh, incorporate it no matter how it was. Uh, they wanted to do something where 
you know, it, it was a it, it was a bit more programmed ahead of time uh, because they know more of what's happening in these individual stories. They were able to come to me, for example, on Rebels and give me, uh, a, you know, a more of an insight into what was happening with those characters, mm -hmm. so that I could plant things that, you know, really weren't revealed until later in in the series, uh, and so. Uh, again, when they came to me and and uh, and said this was the change that they were making, I didn't have to make much of any change at all to the story that I had written because I always, for starters, I always try to write everything as if it's somebody's first Star Wars novel or first Star Trek novel or first Halo story or whatever you mm -hmm. want to call it. So I, I try not to do anything that's totally wallowing in continuity if I can help it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then at the same time, uh, you know, I, I always try to write things as if they're, you know, introductory in the sense that the only thing that I'm assuming is that people are, are uh, you know, have as their common frame of reference is that everybody's seen the movies. Mm -hmm. Everybody's seen, uh, you know, I, I, I'm my, and so my thinking here has always been, uh, you know, let's make this thing as user friendly as possible. Uh, and, so I didn't really have a lot that I needed to to fiddle with. Uh, what instead I got the chance to do was, uh, you know, go through and, uh, you know, we, we decided, well, this is a good chance to get rid of some uh, some terminology that, you know, we had that had built up over the years and that, uh, you know, was kind of. Uh, self-conscious or awkwardly not really you know good writing mm -hmm. uh practice in the sense of things like you know the refresher which was the bathroom or the the word for the the, the otherworldly word word for a bathroom as i've said about star mm -hmm. wars many times uh you know unlike other science fiction you know properties in the 50s and 60s and 70s where they would come up with fake names for household appliances or fake things with or for mm -hmm. uh, familiar things to make them sound more outer spacey. Right. In this case, you know, Star Wars doesn't need any help seeming otherworldly. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, the the thinking here was, you know, if it's an if it's a if it's a bathroom, let's call it a bathroom. You know, I also tried to get rid of the term turbo lift because I know for a fact that turbo lift came from Star Trek. Yeah. Uh, but, right. Yeah. But, but you know, uh, it, it snuck back in after after my time. Uh, yeah. But uh, but I called them elevators. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, th th there you have it. Uh, and so it it really wasn't something, uh, you know, from my point of view, where there was a a big change there. Mm -hmm. uh, it is kind of you know interesting that I have this weird position that, yeah, I wrote the first novel that that uh, you know is is part of this, uh, you know this this uh, you know post. Uh, post legends period mm -hmm. uh, and then also uh, depending on how you count them I have the first legends novel either way uh, because uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, the the uh, the technically the very first legends book uh, that came out was the eighth printing of Lost Tribe of the Sith mm -hmm. so that was the first thing to have the legend banner on it and uh, yeah you might have that there yep got it <laughs> We and, do. Uh, <laughs> and, and then, and then also uh, the the uh, if it wasn't that, then it was going to be Kenobi because mm -hmm. I actually have the I actually have the Kenobi cover image both ways because they had done it before they came up with Legends as their overarching term and then they oh. came up with it afterward. Mm -hmm. um, I guess if I were to say any other you know, immediate change that happened, it was that uh, we didn't really have a title on A New Dawn. And, uh, you know, I, I, I had uh, what I was kind of jokingly referring to it as was loose cannons, uh, because, again, everybody in the uh, everybody in the story is a loose cannon. And mm -hmm. also, uh, you know, cannons are actually part of the uh, thing that the Empire is trying to build in there. Right. Uh, and, you know, they said, no, let's come up with something that actually sounds like it's a beginning. And so we came up with a new dawn, which. Again, was kind of amusing because it takes place on a planet where the sun, if the sun were to ever rise on that planet over the actual populated areas, everybody would, have would cooked die. them, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so anyway, that's my that's my long story <laughs> short of how that all went down. Well, before before Chris asks, I, I have to know something because I've joked about this over the years, and I have to know the actual answer. Um, the title, A New Dawn, did that have anything at all to do with? kind of the sun rising on a new timeline like a new canon timeline i think that was their idea was it okay looking, i wonder they were looking 
they were looking for something that sounded like a beginning. And mm -hmm. also the idea was this was going to be the very first act of the rebellion. Mm -hmm. This was going to be the very first act, or at least of the of the rebel cell that Kanan and Hera were, were doing. So that's what mm -hmm. they wanted. And yeah, I think even at the end, I, I wrote in a scene on a planet where, you know, they, they you know, are walking in the sunrise or something like mm -hmm. that on a different planet uh, where, where, they, where they don't cook. Right. Uh, so, uh, but again, there, there wasn't really, you know, much of anything that I changed. And in fact, yeah, I, you know, there's a line in there where Obi-Wan says, you know, there are, you know, there are legends and there are facts and they can both mm -hmm. tell you something. I'm not even sure that came after the Legends thing. I think that might have been a line of mine because that mm -hmm. was in the prologue. <laughs> so I can't, I'd, I'd have to go back and, and check all my versions of the uh, story, but I, mm -hmm. you know, that, that may be something where it was just an accident. Yeah, uh, well, the first question <laughs> I'd like to ask is, uh, with being involved with both the Legends series as well as the current canon, do you hope in the near future to be working on a project with Lucasfilm that ties more directly into the saga films or even maybe the upcoming Ryan Johnson trilogy or uh, D.B. Weiss and uh, or D.B. Benny Dave Weiss and D.B. Benioff trilogy or series coming? Well, you know, I, 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 they know where to find me. Uh, <laughs> I've uh, and in fact, I just did uh, I did a story in uh, Canto Bite, which was mm -hmm. the uh, the big anthology that came out this last uh, this last uh, December. Yes. Uh, you know, a, a week or so in advance of uh, the Last Jedi, uh, and you know, again, that was something where work we worked with the story group. They let us know a, as much as they could about this section of the film that uh, you know was still, I think, at that point in post production. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I'm not sure it was even clear to them at the time. Uh, you know, whether this would be five minutes, ten minutes, or an hour of the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was something where you know, we did know everything there was to know about, uh, you know, the, the population of this planet and who lived there and all these different characters. Uh, and, you know, it, it was one of those things where it was kind of fun for us, the writers, uh, is seeing the movie because it, it we're like playing Where's Waldo with the crowd scene because <laughs> I may have been the only person in the theater going Hey hey wait a minute there's Caljack and there are the triplets and there's the mm -hmm. you know the, and there's one of the twins uh, and so uh, you know it's it, 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 and so it, it's one of those things where uh, like the cantina scene. Uh, it, it, those characters will become more relevant to people after they've watched the movie three or four mm -hmm. or five times and are starting to look at the background and uh, and and the other things that are there. Um, you know, as far as as far as stuff in the future, uh, again, yeah, I, I've I've always said uh, I'm happy to work with uh, with the franchise as long as uh, you know I'm able to bring something new to it and mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, tell a different kind of story. Uh, the story that is, I wrote in Canto Bite uh, is a is a gambling story mm -hmm. that is of a of a kind that. You know, I don't think anybody had ever really written for Star Wars. Before. I loved that story. Oh, thank you I very much. I loved that story. The only, like, the only, not to cut you off. Um, yeah. The the only one in that book that I really didn't like a whole lot was the second one with the wine. I was I wasn't a big fan of that one, but that last one, the ride. It was called the ride, correct? Uh, that's called the ride. Yeah. Yes, and, and I all, loved all that were, story. I, they were deliberately trying to make sure that all four of the stories had kind of a different angle to them mm -hmm. a different kind of a feel because uh you know the, the the four authors who we had in on this we were all from different uh you know different uh you know parts of the science fiction and mm -hmm. fantasy community and tell different kinds of stories so i think that the notion was that you know a mira grant story is going to feel like a mira grant mm -hmm. story a saladin ahmed story is going to feel like a saladin story right uh and then the, the notion would be that it would have a star wars spin on it uh, and I, I, again, in my case, I'm kind of, you know, running the anchor leg there and <laughs> trying to do something that I hadn't done before. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, this was something where I, I started to really think about, uh, the role of luck in the star Wars universe as distinct from the use of the force. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and I, I wanted to, you know, take this, uh, this notion that already applied, uh, in Star Wars to, you know, whether you should depend on the force or whether you should depend on the computer uh, to do your uh, to do your targeting sequence. Well, <laughs> I, I realized that 
you know, that's exactly something that that goes on in Las Vegas and, you know, in uh, in Atlantic City, uh, in your you know local uh, riverboat casino mm -hmm. every day uh, where you're always struggling between the balance between, well, should I go with my gut, uh, trust your feelings or trust the math? Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was really a perfect kind of an opportunity to tell a story about you know, a guy, and this is a kind of guy that I knew something about because, uh, you know, I, I, I realized that I had to, you know, probably you know, quit grad school in part because I was spending so much time either at the uh, at the off-track betting center or playing poker at night or, or something like that. <laughs> We've all been uh, there. Uh, I was, I was, you know, the, the good thing was that, uh, you know, uh, casinos didn't come in until the year after I graduated. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, I mean, I, I'm very much one of those system kind of guys and if i had more patience you know i i could have you know been that guy who was counting the cards mm -hmm. uh and you know one of the fun things about star wars is there are a lot of games in the star wars universe that had been established i mean there's a game right there in the very first movie where you know they're playing on the chessboard uh and so i was able to bring back uh you know the the Pazak game from knights of the old republic yes uh and this is one of the fun things that's happening is, uh, I don't know when this is airing, but uh, at the at the end of February, uh, there's a charity gaming event that's out at uh, the Emerald City Comic Con, uh, where a group of people have donated to charity in order to play at my Pazak table. Oh, so <laughs> wow. That's cool. And so I'm actually working with uh, with uh, some fellow uh, you know game people, uh, game designers to you know, come up with a little bit of a role playing element to oh, it as well. And uh, that's and so cool. uh, you know I'm I'm doing something as well to uh, re repurpose another old card game called Car Wars for for uh, for Star Wars purposes, so we can do a demolition <laughs> derby with uh, uh, with spacecraft. So oh. anyway. Uh, Again, just uh, just some of the fun that you can have just by fiddling with the you know stuff that's already out there in the universe. Yep. No, I used to when I played Nazi the Old Republic. I used to sit and play Pazak. If I was bored, I would sit and play Pazak against the same guy for hours and hours and hours and just go and keep going and keep going until I was either out of money or I just fell asleep. Uh, well, but for, for the purposes of what we're doing, you know, I literally had to dig up yesterday. For my old uh, Knights of the Old Republic, uh, you know, Prima Player's Guide or mm -hmm. whatever it was, the the actual menu of how much each of the ca cards cost, oh. so we could so we could figure out so we could figure out okay, you know, they must have already done the rarity classings when they were figuring <laughs> out this game, uh, and again, that's another just you know random old fact about me is I used to be the editor of a magazine called Scry. Mm -hmm. Which was the card game magazine for for Magic the Gathering and that sort of stuff. So, you I know, thought I, it had a failure. Oh yeah, so it's a, it's a, so it's one of those things where you know I, I have that sort of you know background with uh, you know collectible card games and rarities and that sort of thing. And you know, we're we're figuring out ways to put this into this game, and it's just for fun. It's not something that's you know there's there isn't even an official Pazak set that's out. <laughs> Uh, you know some uh, you know some fans actually you know came up with a very convincing looking set. Oh man! At least none of those cards are gonna change numbers like they did in the ride. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was, that was. That was I, uh, I'm not gonna uh, lie. That my heart was pounding during that last little bit of that match, and I'm just like, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. It's it's great in the audiobook too. I mean, that's uh, is it? Jonathan Davis uh, does great voices for all of those characters. Oh. And yeah, that was that that sort of climactic moment. Not to give anything away, but mm -hmm. uh, in that in that book. Um, that just really sort of felt like this is this character's Death Star trench run. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> and and, uh, and the the triplets, uh, you know, showing up. Yeah, they're Han Solo and, and mm -hmm. Chewbacca. So it's uh, I, again, it, it, these are all all of these stories, whatever they are, are ways to sort of take the the you know the tools of Star Wars, the themes of Star Wars. And you know, tweak them in a way that is of interest mm -hmm. uh, in a new kind of story, so that you're not really noticing that you're, you know, being told the same story over and over again. You don't want that to have, you know, you don't want that to happen. You want something that feels new every time. Right. Well, uh, Chris, do you want to get to our, some of our viewer questions? Uh, we I, we have I certainly can. We have several uh, we'd like to ask, uh, and I, I don't want to go too far over time, uh, but. Uh, 
Go ahead, Chris. Well, got, frequently, it's frequently got... my fault. Oh no, 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 no. That's okay, that's okay. perfect. <laughs> like my, uh, like I told you today, uh, we we had Mike Quinn on for the one year or to, for the two year show, and I told him twenty and thirty twenty or thirty minutes, and it turned into an hour. But it was because we were just sitting there talking and we lost track of time, and it was a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, go ahead, Chris. All right. Well, the only one I've got is from uh, Oscar Herrera from Facebook. He mm -hmm. sent this in. Uh, how much was shown to you regarding the rebels? Uh, regarding Rebels, to show you where they wanted the storyline to head before you started writing A New Dawn. Uh, as I said, I did get the you know the story bible for the first year, so I knew pretty much all the way up to you know I, I you know I I think the Ahsoka reveal was at the end of that still. Um, you know, one of the things that was pretty much you know suggested to me was that uh, look, you're going to be writing about Kanan and his history and his background. Um, you know, I don't know whether the Marvel book was actually in production yet or not. I, I can't remember that, but I, I do know that, you know, the, the theory was that, you know, as far as Kanan at this year in this time, part of the timeline, you know, I was going to have free reign to say whatever I wanted to about him and about the, the past several years that he had lived through, uh, you know, not exactly him as a very young Padawan, um, other than the the prologue sequence that we did, mm -hmm. um, Hera though, uh, it was it was fairly clear to me that she was not, uh, you know, her her history, her background, her, was not my story to tell. Uh, that was going to be coming up. That was part of the thing that was going to unfold throughout uh, the first season. And so, you know, even though I, uh, you know, had sections of the book where. Uh, we are, you know, in her mind, we're, you know, she's the point of view character. Uh, I had to be very careful to keep her thinking almost always about the job, about the moment, about the future, and not about the past. Uh, because even though I knew quite a bit about where she had come from, I really, you know, almost wish I didn't know that stuff because it was <laughs> not necessarily something I could, uh, I could uh, give away. It was kind of hard not to touch on it. Yeah, I, I, I think. Yeah, you, you kind of on the one hand you you kind of don't want to know it. On the other hand, it really helps to know it so that you're not saying something that ends up being completely you know contradictory to something mm -hmm. that's coming along in the future. Uh, but even so, yeah, you you, you kind of realize well this is this is uh, this is the the, the section that uh, I, the way I look at it is is you know it's not yet baseball season yet. Although I think the pitchers are reporting like in a week uh, <laughs> as, we're, as we're talking about this. Uh, you know, everybody's got their own stretch of the outfield, and uh, you know they they you don't want to run smack into the middle of another player when they're trying to make a catch. Mm -hmm. And it was clear to me that yeah, you know, this was something that the you know the center fielder had called, <laughs> and so I was gonna you know, they're waving me off. I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do the uh, the Harris story right now. The the, the background. <laughs> um, well, I've got another There's question. Not. Oh, yeah. Now, I've, I've got another question from one of our viewers, uh, Nick Albers, and he asked through the Facebook page, uh, how much freedom do you and other authors get when it comes to the story you're writing? Well, you know, once we had figured out the very basics um, of, you know, this is going to be Hera and uh, Kanan's first meeting, uh, everything else about that story was mine, mm -hmm. um, more or less. I mean, the, the whole idea about... Uh, you know the the efficiency expert turned into a you know an imperial you know an imperial uh, manufacturing guru. Mm -hmm. um, you know the, even little small stories like uh, you know the uh, you know the stories that took place in uh, uh, Rise of the Empire, for example, the the book that combines Tarkin and A New Dawn. Mm -hmm. All I had was that my story was going to take place between Tarkin and A New Dawn, and in fact, I think I even suggested that. Uh, so. Um, but everything else about what happened between those characters was was mine. Uh, you know, going up to Canto Bite again, that's another one of those things where, uh, you know, I was told that there were these three lucky, you know, you know, frog guys, and that there was, uh, you know, that there was uh, this other card player that was there, and uh, everything else about you know their their whole situation, uh, you know, all came from me. Um, you know, and, and again. What you take to them really sort of depends on the franchise and what's going on in the franchise at any one time. Um, you know, the Kenobi novel, when I initially pitched it, was a graphic novel. 
and it was at such a time that we weren't really sure that they were going to accept it uh, because they were still talking about doing a Star Wars live action TV show that mm -hmm. might involve that time frame. Uh, you know, fast forward five years later, that's no longer in the picture. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was able to take that story. And again, everything about that had been, you know, something that I came up with on my own. It wasn't something where they were looking for the Obi-Wan Kenobi Western. Uh, mm -hmm. that was, that was something that, that, that was, was all mine. Uh, but again, you, you know, if you're doing something though now, odds are, you know, there are fewer novels coming out because they don't do those mass market paperbacks anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the odds are, you know, more likely that, it's going to need to connect to something somewhere, uh, you know, whether it's it's um, you know whether it's Phasma tying into uh, to Last Jedi, uh, Thrawn is really you know tying into the to, in a sense to the Rebels TV series, uh, so it's uh, it's it's something where you're probably working a bit more directly uh, at the genesis of these things. Uh, with the licensor, but again, it, it really does depend on the franchise and what it is and what's going on. Uh, you know, again, w when I wrote my Star Trek trilogy that came out about a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was doing it with the uh, Next Generation cast and the original series casts, about which it was pretty, you know, open that I could write whatever I want as long as it fit in with all the other novels that had come out. Uh, but, you know, again, the, the novels that are coming out this past year all tie in with Discovery, and that's something where, you know, that's an ongoing TV show, and it's not something that's been off the air for, you know, 20 years. So it's, mm -hmm. right. it's, uh, so, so it, it, it's something where, you know, if I were pitching for that, uh, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd definitely have a, a, a different, you know, sort of ground rules going in and different expectations of what you might be able to get away with. Right. Um, well, I've got four more questions for you. One of them is actually from uh, one of our own panelists for Breaking the Fourth Wall. Her name is Kristen Stovall. Uh, she's actually an author. Uh, and she, I asked her if she had anything she wanted me to ask you, and she said yes. She had one question, and she wanted to know, what advice would you give an up-and-coming author to get their book out there? Well, what I've always said is, you know, write anything anywhere where other people can read it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was a journalist. I was uh, the uh, I was you know, doing fanzines as a kid. Uh, I was uh, you know, editor of my high school newspaper. I was editor of my college newspaper. Uh, you know, it, 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 I wrote about a lot of stuff that I didn't care about. Uh, you know, I, 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 edited a line of lumber magazines for a year uh, <laughs> and, you know, my, my, I gotta tell you, you know, the, the, whatever you've heard about that industry, it's, it's not as exciting as all of that. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but what it taught me was how to actually communicate to other people in a way that it actually, you know, mattered to them. Uh, and, and I got feedback along the way. And I also, uh, you know, got used to being read. I got used to, uh, you know, uh, criticism from others. I got used to hitting deadlines. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and you know, all of that stuff, you know, it, it was, uh, I think it was uh, like a dozen years ago that I finally uh, pitched my first thing to Marvel as a comic book. Uh, and before that, I had been, you know, running, uh, as I've said, you know, the various magazines that, uh, that I was working on. Uh, as a journalist. So uh, again, you know, uh, write reviews for your local paper or just for your own website of movies or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, write, um, you know, you know, write stories about the, the local high school team's football game. Write anything that gets you accustomed to writing things and that where, you know, pe where people are going to see it uh, and where other people might be editing your work and you'll have to learn how to deal with that too. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, and, and then once you've done all that, uh, you know, that's, that's when you write short stories and, and later novels, I would usually do short stories first. Uh, and I always tell people that, you know, fan fiction is fun. Uh, I, it's practice. And I, as I've just said, practice is important. Uh, but you're never, ever, ever going to be able to sell that novel. 
uh, if it's not about your character. Right. And so uh, that you're not, they're not even legally allowed to look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, what I've always said is, you know, try to try to create as many things that you own as possible. Uh, and I know it sounds strange coming from me because I've been working <laughs> in for other people's sandboxes for so long. Uh, but uh, that really is, you know, nobody gets their Star Wars novel published by having written a Star Wars novel before they submit it. I mean, that, that it right. doesn't work. Right. Okay, I actually lied to you. I have two more questions for you. I'm sorry. I, uh, I missed count a while ago. Uh, and both of them come from a viewer we have in England. Uh, his name is Richard J. He's one of the best followers we've got, one of the most loyal follower, followers we got. He's one of my best friends, and I've never even met the man. Uh, but uh, I told him that I was going to be talking to you today, and uh, he was he pretty much fanboyed out for the first little bit. And then I asked him if he had anything I wanted to, uh, that he wanted me to ask you. And uh, he gave me, uh, well, three questions, but one of them's already been answered. So uh, the first question I'm going to ask from him is, what was the thought process for tackling the Obi-Wan novel, a character loved by new and old fans? How did you get the balance right between Ben and Obi-Wan? Well, that was uh, something, as I said, it started as it was going to be a graphic novel for Dark Horse's 20th anniversary. Uh, uh, or actually, it was either Dark Horse's 20th anniversary or Star Wars's 30th. Uh, which might have even been the same year. I don't know. Yeah, it was. It was 2000, 2007. Mm -hmm. uh, and it turned out that, uh, you know, as I got further into it, it was it just got so long, I realized this thing will never, ever fit uh, in a graphic novel because it's going to be you know, all sorts of pages. It's, it's going to be like one of those, you know, Italian, you know, Sergio Leone, you know, uh, westerns where yeah. you know, it's wide swaths of sand and again and again and again and i would love to write that graphic novel still uh it's just going to be 500 pages uh and and uh but that was something where you know at, at it, it was something where my editor and i were kicking around various ideas and uh you know we had discussed our mutual love for a movie called shane uh which uh, came out in the 1950s based on a, a novel mm -hmm about a western gunslinger who is uh you know, trying to hang up his hang up his guns and no longer fight anymore and uh and you know the irony there is uh it, the role in the movie was played by alan ladd senior uh and of course it was alan ladd jr who was the executive producer for star wars uh which is which is kind of fun uh but uh but anyway the idea was that you know i wanted to tell the first month of obi-wan kenobi's time on tatooine from the point of view of other people who lived on that planet, mm -hmm. uh, the woman who ran the local general store, the local landowner who, you know, at first sees him as a friend and then wonders if he's possibly going to be a threat, uh, and uh, and then um, you know the, the the Tuscan Raider chieftain, uh, who you know that was great. We got to bring that character back in uh, in the uh, the the collection from mm -hmm. a certain point of view. That was that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, but again, the Tuscan Raider was going to be the only one who would realize right away. Uh, and, and even that doesn't happen right away, but certainly it's, it's something where it's like, oh yeah, this guy might actually be a wizard. Okay. Well, well, okay. That explains, that explains a lot. And that explains also why, you know, they ran like scared bunnies when he, you know, makes that sound mm -hmm. in, uh, in, uh, you know, Star Wars, uh, New Hope. Uh, so yeah, I, I I wanted to tell this uh, the story that would take a long time to spin out, and uh, I think the you know part of the joy of it for me was um, everybody already knows what's happening to Obi Wan Kenobi and his future here. Everybody knows he can't leave the planet, so I had to come up with something where you know he was able to be pivotal in the lives of everybody else. And there literally is not a character in that novel uh, whose life he does not turn upside down uh, mm -hmm. without even trying. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I had a lot of fun with that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's something where, um, you know, people are always talking about, you know, movie this or movie that as far as he's concerned. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have not heard of any. I have not heard of anything even confirmed yet. I mean, I've, there's just, uh, you know, a, a Hollywood mm -hmm. reporter that everybody's read yeah uh and you know every so often my social media will blow up <laughs> with people talking about things and I'm, I'm like well okay yeah fine uh if if they do it that's great if not that's great you know mm -hmm. it's uh you will see i 
yeah, I've had I've had various random brushes with the movies you know, before. I've got a uh, I've got a character in the new uh, Ant Man film that's coming out uh, this uh, this summer, so that's kind of neat. Oh, nice! Oh, wow, really? Yeah, uh, they, they, I wrote an Iron Man uh, story arc that wound up uh, birthing a bunch of different characters in the movies. <laughs> Uh, the uh, the uh, the reporter that you see in the first two Iron Man movies, the uh, uh, the Leslie Bibb character, mm-hmm. uh, uh, yeah, she's uh, Christine Everhart. She's from that first uh, Iron Man story <laughs> arc I wrote, and uh, yeah, the uh, the uh, the character Sonny Birch, who's sort of the 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 big you know, businessman mm-hmm. turned Pentagon honcho that's in that Iron Man storyline I did. Uh, he it, at least as far as I can tell, he appears to be. Uh, the lead, you know, human adversary in uh, Ant Man and the Wasp. So, uh, yeah, we'll we'll see what that ends up being like. I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so I've got one more question for you, and it is also from Richard J. Uh, well, before you before you do, I just want okay, to go ahead. off of the uh, Kenobi thing. If they ever do actually confirm Kenobi to be a Star Wars film, how interested would you be in maybe pitching repitching your book as a screenplay? <laughs> Well, I, I've I've joked about that too. Again, I'm very very far from the water cooler in Hollywood. Uh, you know, I'm not a member of the screen uh, screenwriters uh, you know guilds or anything like that. Uh, I uh, I I'm I'm somebody who's uh, written novels and written comics and uh, a lot of other things. And uh, certainly, it would be a lot of fun. Um, you know, my guess is there's no shortage of people wanting to write these things. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> but, yeah. But but certainly, you know, I, I you know, I, I have my preferences for what I think such a story, you know, should have. And I think that, you know, my novel is an expression of how I think sort of that kind of story should be told. You know, I think I would probably be disappointed. Uh, well, not disappointed, but I wouldn't ever, you know, necessarily go for a choice of, of a movie where it's all about Sith lords coming mm-hmm. to try and, you know, attack uh, attack uh, Luke Skywalker. You know, they they kind of they kind of did a, a bit of that in Rebels mm-hmm. uh, here in in this last year, and it makes sense. The thing is, you can't have that happening every 15 minutes. Right. Uh, uh, otherwise, you know, what kind of hiding place is this? Yeah. Okay, so I've got one more question for you, sir, uh, and it is from Richard J. He he wanted to know what is the most fun you've had writing a novel. The most fun I've had writing a novel. Most well, fun. That's, that's, yeah, that's uh, yeah. That, there there have been increasingly. I'm trying to focus on stories that you know, writing writing things are just gonna be a blast uh, to write. And again, as I said, Canto Bite that that ride story. Uh, that's there. That was, you know, which is basically one wild night in a gambler's life. Uh, that was fun from start to finish. Uh, you know, I did a a, a, a Planet of the Apes short story here about a year ago uh, for a, a book called uh, Tales from the Forbidden Zone, and this was something where you know it's not it's not a huge project uh, in the sense that it's tying in with one of the big new movies, but it. it it was uh, it was a book where it tied in with the original Planet of the Apes movies that came out in the '60s and '70s, uh, and I got to write a, a a story that took off from one of my favorite sections of one of my favorite of those movies, Escape from Planet of the Apes, where you know the the Cornelius and Zira go to 1973, and uh, and first they put them in the zoo, and after they realize they can talk. They uh, they give them uh, they 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 put them in uh, in expensive uh, evening wear and they send them out to high society in uh, in uh, in in Hollywood and uh, and so I wrote a story I, I'm really big into TV history television history I wrote a story about a a, a television producer who was trying to put Cornelius and Zira into his new TV series uh, and uh, I was able to write it where it interlaced with the movie. At the same time that because it was Earth and because it was already canonized that this is really 1973, I was able to have all these in-jokes, not just about stuff that was on TV in 1973, not just about, you know, well, this this sounds like you know Rod Serling or Gene Roddenberry or whoever, uh, but there's pretty much a reference to every single 
ape TV show or ape movie <laughs> that you could imagine there. Uh, and we don't exactly say it out loud or, you know, what, what they are. But if you if you know that stuff, you'll look at it and say, oh, OK, that's uh, that's Cheetah from Tarzan. They're talking about uh, that's uh, that's that's Lancelot Link secret chimp that they're talking about. Uh, you know, that's uh, J. Fred Muggs, the chimpanzee from uh, from the Today Show that they're talking about. <laughs> and again, it's just one in joke after another. Uh, Simpsons comics. When I wrote when I when I write Simpsons comics, and I haven't done that in a while, that's like that too. It's just a joke every panel, or two jokes every panel, and it's in jokes all over the place because you're you're putting them in so much. Yeah, that that's kind of my dirty secret is <laughs> even though I write. I write space battles and I write uh, you know, uh, fantasy and and everything like that. Uh, I'm I'm a, I'm a comedy writer, uh, you know, it'll uh, at heart and uh, and certainly anybody who read the Knights of the Old Republic comics that I did, yeah, there are a lot of jokey moments. So. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, uh, I, I want to we're both talking okay. to each other. Oh yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I, oh man, I, uh, Knights of the Old Republic. I just I. I've got a long box full of comics. I've got the game. Like I'm losing my mind. So well, and those are all out again uh, because the first two thirds of that right. series are now in two giant collections that Marvel's got oh. these uh, Old Republic epic collections. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, yeah, it, it's a uh, it's it's a little easier to get into those now. Oh yeah, and it's easier to sit down and just read through them and just lose track of time going through them that way too. When you're just mm -hmm. when you've got one hardback edition instead of several issues you're going through. Uh, but don't forget the uh, don't forget the comment before before we yeah outro. that's yeah that's what I'm getting uh, Richard J wanted me to let you know this is what he told me to tell you he said pass on my thanks for him making me want to read and seek out material instead of just watching movies and video games so that's what he wanted me to tell you uh, he's a, he's a big big fan of yours and I know he was kind of jealous that we were going to talk to you tonight so well that's uh, that's that's nice I mean that's why they hire us yeah. Uh, that's that's why they uh, you know that's 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 why they uh, you know, that's why they've done tie-in fiction all over the years. I mean, yep. It's it, it's something they've been doing for you know 70, 80 years, going back to the old radio shows of the Lone Ranger. Mm -hmm. uh, you know they've they've done books and comics on these things, and uh, you know the the hope for the people who wrote them over the years, the hope was that you know people would read them and remember them and. You know, they wouldn't be just disposable in the way that I think they really were for a lot of years. Uh, and, uh, you know, Star Wars with first the expanded universe and now what they're doing, uh, you know, with the story group uh, has made these things essential parts of the story uh, for a lot of people. And, you know, if uh, if uh, he remembers the stories and he enjoys them and uh, if everyone does, uh, you know, that's that's uh, that's that's a job well done. Oh, yeah. No, he's he's a big fan. He's read like all the EU except I think one book like he was, he was a big big fan of yours but uh, Mr. Miller thank you so much for doing this for us tonight I really do appreciate it uh, it's been an absolute blast having you on I know we went about 40-45 minutes uh, <laughs> it's okay but, but uh, I, if, if people are looking for uh, me on the internet uh, they can find me on uh, Twitter at JJM Faraway uh, Facebook is just John Jackson Miller uh, then my, my website, I've got behind the scenes pages on all the stories that I've done, except for the ones for the last year and a half, because I haven't written the notes yet, but, uh, that's uh, farawaypress.com. Farawaypress.com. That's awesome. Chris, where can they find you at, sir? Uh, you can find me everywhere on realm of the mist.com. And of course, realm of the mist is YouTube, YouTube channel, YouTube, YouTube channel, YouTube, YouTube. I can't talk today. I worked all day. Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys can find me right here at the Star Wars Canon Library every week. Uh, we're going to be doing another Monday mailbag here tonight. Probably well, might be tomorrow. I don't know. But anyway, we're going to be doing another Monday mailbag. Make sure to visit the website, www.starwarscanonlibrary.com. Make sure to visit the Facebook page as well and give us a thumbs up there. And if you guys like this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. I sure appreciate it. If you guys really liked it, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, this is Brian, Chris, and Mr. Jackson Miller himself. May the Force be with you. Uh, hey guys, make sure to check out the website. It is www.starwarscanonlibrary.com. You can email us anytime with any questions for any Star Wars canon material whatsoever. It's just starwarscanonlibrary.gmail.com. Make sure to check out our Facebook page as well. It is facebook.com slash starwarscanonlibrary. If you guys like this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. There's plenty more videos coming where this one came from. If you really liked it, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I'd sure appreciate it.